What's going on everybody, Nick Costa here and welcome to part two on how to tune and muffle a bass drum. In this video, I'm going to be going over my process on how I tune a front resonant head and this particular head is non-ported. Throughout this video, I am also going to be going over various muffling techniques so that way you can hear how that can affect the sound of your bass drum or kick drum. I'm excited to get into this with all of you, so let's get started. Okay, so in part one, I went over my procedure on replacing and tuning the batter head of a kick drum. Throughout the video, the Rezo head had a four inch mic port. Now for this video, part two, I'm going to be going over my procedure on replacing the Rezo head. This time, however, I'm gonna be replacing it with a non-ported front head. This is going to help you hear the difference between a ported and non-ported front head. So let's dive into replacing that front Rezo head. All right, so let's talk about the resonance side for a minute. Now, with this side, a lot of folks don't think that it makes a difference when you are tuning your bass drum, but believe it or not, it totally does, just like your toms. We talked about in the tom tuning video that that bottom head is where you are primarily getting the tone of the drum from. The resonant head on a bass drum, however, although you are getting the majority of the punch from your batter side, you are hearing that resonant side reacting after that initial attack from the batter side. So it is crucial that you do tune and maintain your resonant side just as much as your batter. Now, just like Tom's, however, although you are not striking this particular head, it does stretch out over time and it can start to sound a little dead and lose the tone of the drum. So it's important that you replace them. Now for the sake of this video and so you can hear the difference between a ported and non-ported front head, I'm gonna be replacing the head with a standard Ludwig white drum head. As you can see, this is a PS3 smooth white. It also doesn't have the stripe around the outside so it looks a little nicer on the front, but you can also notice there is no port installed. The really rad thing is that if you were to order this from Ludwig or your local Ludwig retailer, you're gonna notice that it comes with one of these Remo Dynamos or Dynamos, however you wanna call it. You can stick this to the head and then it allows you to cut with an X-Acto knife. So if you want to port this in the future, you actually can do so. Now, just like the batter side, you're gonna be removing these in a cross star pattern, once again, to try and make sure that it's even tension across the entire drum head. So once again, uh, once you take the head off, I actually place it with the hoop and everything on a drum throne. That way, don't have to worry about any of the claws or anything else sliding and moving out of place. And of course, once again, this is a perfect time to go around, clean the bearing edge, inspect for any dirt, debris, any issues that you might have with your bearing edges, look for any craters, ply separation, anything like that. And once you see that your drum is good to go and you clean off that bearing edge surface, it's time to apply the new drum head. So in this case, like I mentioned, we are going to leave it as a solid front head. We are not going to be porting this in this video. So what you want to make sure that you do is you have that Ludwig logo lined up in between the two lugs up top. You can also make sure that it's in line with your badge. So the really rad thing about this is that you can see um, kind of like where that D and W is right here. That's kind of the middle of the head. You can also see the crown logo. It's in the middle. Of course, this isn't important. Some people don't care about this, but if you are somebody who wants that nice clean visual, make sure that your logos are actually straight when the drum is in its proper position. Something you just want to be mindful of. And then of course, once you do that, you want to apply your hoop with your tension rods in place. And you wanna go around, finger tighten all of them. All 
All right, so once you get all of them finger tight, one thing you can do is you can actually put the drum upright and take a look. Logo looks straight to me. Not sure if you can actually see that in the photo. Let's take a look. Yeah, cool. So now, from here, just like we did with the other side, we need to take our drum key. And in this case, we're gonna do one full turn at each spot. So there's one, go across. Once again, you're gonna hear crackling and popping, totally fine and normal. And there's that start point, right? So. There's a little bit of a wrinkle over there, so we are going to tighten these just a little bit. Try and get rid of that wrinkle, let's check. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, so once again, no CPR, right? So just sit on the drum. You're going to hear it crackle and pop. You can bounce up and down on it just ever so slightly. And all good to go. So now, time to tune. Once again, tap around each area. Match them all to the best of your abilities. So you can hear some are a little lower than others. And once again, you can take your bass drum beater. And match accordingly. I think we're gonna go with this as our reference pitch. So we'll go up a little bit too. And then once again, you can do a test, just put the drum where it normally is and then hit. What I usually like to do when I am hitting with the beater, I like to put my head closer to the rezzo side so I can hear it a little bit more. And right now it sounds almost like a subwoofer or a sub kick, which to some folk might not sound bad, but once you get a microphone up to it, not going to sound too great. So most likely it's because of the fact that this head is too loose. So we're going to raise the pitch a little bit. This is a perfect example of although I thought that I wanted to go with that lower reference point, once you get the drum in tune with itself, at least the head in tune with itself, sometimes it might actually be a little too low. Check again. That sounds pretty good to me. So let's flip this over and bring it over here. Let's make sure it's in shot. Nice. Now let's talk about this unported front head. You're going to notice the drum has a whole lot more body to it than it does without a port. Later on in the video, we're going to do a comparison back and forth. So if you're in an environment, once again, where you aren't close micing your kit, or if you are in a minimalist fashion, maybe just with overheads, or you're in a large space, say an auditorium or a gymnasium for a basketball game, maybe you're playing in a pep band, something of that nature, you're going to want to go without a port for your front head. 
That's just gonna help make this drum sound a lot bigger and make the sound travel further than when it does have a port. This is also a specific type of sound, however. So if you are in a situation where you are close micing your entire kit and you do have a microphone on your kick drum, you might wanna have this fuller sound to it, especially if you're in a big band setting or you are in a certain vibe, maybe you're in that indie folk where your drums are a little dead, so you're gonna detune this drum a little bit more. You might wanna actually not have a port on that front head. Okay, so now that this is all back together, let's get it back on the kit. All right, so here I am back at the kit and it's time for the playing examples. Just like part one, I'm going to start out with this drum being completely wide open with no muffling. And as I play through the groove, I will progressively add one additional piece of muffling until it is fully muffled. So enough of me talking, let's get to playing. And there you have it. If you checked out part one where the front head had that four inch mic port, you can hear a substantial difference between the ported and non-ported front head. Just like I mentioned in part one, my personal opinion is to have the kick drum as wide open as possible. And to me, when it's wide open like that, you have a nice punch and initial attack to it. Now, my personal opinion is that the more muffling that you add to it, the less the attack becomes and it gets a little muffled. Actually, it almost starts to sound like a ball being dribbled on a basketball court. Now to some people that might sound great, but to me, I really like to have that punch when I am playing my kick drum. Either way, I would love to hear what sound you like the most. So make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know.
And if you need any additional tuning videos on how to tune toms or a snare drum, I have a complete tuning playlist on my channel and you can access that with the link right here. If you are viewing this video on YouTube, make sure that you do hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you're notified of any additional content that I upload to the channel. And that is it. Thank you so much for checking out part two on how to tune and muffle your bass drum. Hopefully you've gotten something out of it. And until next time, see you later. Yeah.